Maybe when Mitsubi comes because the presentation is in his computer, maybe we can open, I'm not sure, maybe we can open a round, a round of questions for the three presentations that we have had already and then we, we continue with uh, Richard's presentation. Is that okay? So, presentation and questions for Joe to. Well, but we can have at least one question to keep the conversation going for Joe or for John or for, or for Roger. Or not? Okay, Mitsubi is here. Is a human right. Digital divide is a reality. We have in excess of more than 4, 4 billion people in the world who don't have access to communications. And I think communications in today's age is a human right. Malawi is a diamond in the rough, a landlocked country with magnificent flora, fauna, and a freshwater lake, just to mention a few. It is home to the friendliest, peace-loving, exceptional citizens. Malawi truly is the warm heart of Africa. However, Malawi is not an exception to the estimated 4 billion people in the world that are not connected to the much-needed internet. C3, a local company, is on a quest to close the digital gap by connecting the unconnected. C3 is currently providing innovative community connectivity creating broadband for the rest of us. Richard Shisala is CTO and Technical Director for C3. Uh, Africa uh, is, is a continent rich in resources and, and, and knowledge, capital, and, and, and these things we need to exploit them and, and bring them to the attention of the world of what. It is this factor that I feel it's important that we allow the people who have got the knowledge, who have got the resources, and the most unsafe and rural area to, to work uh, using technology. As a social technopreneur, I do believe that by providing the access networks and infrastructure to the rural communities and, and those who need the communication most, uh, they, they will participate in the global uh, economy. The, the drivers in innovations, especially in the concept of TV white spaces, which is really changing the dynamics of, of how we access the spectrum. Malawi has got a lot of spectrum than America or America don't have a lot of spectrum than Malawi. So why can't we exploit uh, the same spectrum uh, uh, and we provide them to the people? This has been a tremendous motivation to, to, to the team. And I say for myself, I have developed a lot of passion for it because I have developed systems and, and platforms and, and services for the world. People both in schools and community and uh, service the uh, uh, government uh, advisory. Uh, councils, and I, I have seen that there is a lot of push on the special African continent to liberalize the telecommunications and communications and infrastructure. C3 has already begun connecting the unconnected in Tarika, Malawi. Tarika is a refugee camp estimated to at the moment be hosting 30,000 refugees. 
these refugees, together with residents of neighboring communities, now enjoy internet through C3. C3 is also currently building communication infrastructure consisting of 80 tower locations, 65 of which are owned by the company. C3 is also building 15,000 access points to connect the unconnected villages and communities, all this running on solar energy. Uh, as a company, we have a tremendous plan uh, in the next five years, three, three to five years, and we, we believe um, with the uh, uh, pace and development of technology, we're always going to see some innovative stuff. There is also access to content, uh, not just uh, uh, community chats and, and community messaging, uh, emergency response systems. Uh, we see this as uh, an area we think in the middle of the uh, We do my community with various forums, whereas people in Africa are still number of one share of disasters and we believe by putting in place these sort of networks we will create a friendly platform to assist in disaster relief and management programs. This is possibly the largest footprint of its nature. This kind of innovative connectivity is possible because C3 works very well with other companies like Simbanet. Brian Longwe is general manager for Simbanet. Um, we are supporting the government through this project uh, by providing the government with the bandwidth for their e-government programs and all of government internet access right now is predominantly provided by Signalnet. But beyond that we have an obligation under this partnership to take the benefits of this technology as far as wide as possible and we are doing that through service providers like C3. Um, we are providing our uh, capacity to the likes of Airtel, TNM, uh, Skyband, and C3. Given that they uh, are a newcomer into the marketplace, they are coming in and they are really shaking things up. I think, as you mentioned previously, they are you know, well in the progress of rolling out 15,000 access points uh, countrywide, which will give them a massive footprint. This is the kind of impact that we um, are extremely excited about seeing in the marketplace because it means that the benefits of this technology will be able to get down to the man, the woman, the child on the ground, no matter where they live in Malawi. Predominantly up until now, the concentration and most service providers have been the capitals. Uh, the capital city. In the south you have Plata, in the central you have Milon, in the north you have Misuzu. Most providers have been focusing their attention on those locations, the urban locations. Uh, C3 has gone beyond that um, and are looking now to harness the rural populace and take services to them not only at a, a more affordable price but even in a simplified form that is going to be able to be, uh, you know, uh, increase the accessibility of them. Villages and communities are not as advantaged as urban areas in many aspects, but still the people in villages and communities need to communicate and connect as much as people in urban areas. The least most influential thing that villages and communities can have is better connectivity. C3 is a company that provides to villages and communities better connectivity and so much more. Uh, having had the experience of working in building the infrastructure for over a number of years, and things that you find as a motivating factor to build this sort of stuff is to allow people
just emphasizes the same factor that uh, communication is what we need. As said, I am the CTO of a company named C3. Uh, C3. Uh, C3 is a communication company. Uh, we are building infrastructure. What we have, um, I probably want to give you a background to the numbers, but uh, let's look at what exactly we are trying to achieve. Malawi actually is um, one of the poorest countries in the world. I think it's around uh, one of the 10 poorest countries. And uh, it's actually, the population is growing at the fastest rate, meaning that uh, uh, we, we, we will exceed the 17.4 million um, since we've managed to hold the, uh, the acceleration of the aids and growth that rate. And we also uh, have a, a youngest population um, at the moment uh, in terms of the, the spread of numbers. We are a Microsoft um, uh, um, seed catalog invested company. Um, Microsoft has done some uh, investment for us through the affordable uh, infrastructure uh, uh, as a start project. Uh, just as our colleague there, uh, uh, Mr. Baker at Moibu, so we are following the footsteps and hopefully I will be like Moibu shortly. We are estimating an investment of about $5 million within a space of three to five years. We are rolling out uh, in excess of um, 80 TV white space base station, about uh, three and a half. That number has keeps on changing. I think we've just been told it's going to be about 4,000 uh, CPEs across the country. We have yes started building. We have uh, put us up a very tall order of building more than 10,000 uh, white house. Basically, we want to accelerate the growth of connectivity in the country. I would like to explain what were the triggers and let me just kind of demystify what have been the factors which have enabled us to, to, to do this in, in the country. And I've uh, mentioned this on a previous conference summit at DSA that there have been factors both internal and external which allow us to participate. Uh, and, and let me just uh, quickly run through those. Firstly, is the uh, affordability of international capacity. Malawi, uh, in the last three to five years, we've seen a drop from about, uh, uh, with a, about 70% drop in international bandwidth costs. And that's uh, indeed uh, that improved the, the cost of connectivity. The regulatory framework and the legal framework in Malawi has been uh, extremely responsive to allow us to uh, uh, build these networks. Bear in mind that TV watch is reasonably new. And uh, we, we, we had to work with the regulator and the authorities to allow us to do these things. We have uh, received tremendous incentives from the government, uh, 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 given us various breaks and tax breaks, and, 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 and allow us to import loads of equipment in the country to, to build this infrastructure. We've also been working with, uh, 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 to participate in the International Point in Malawi, and uh, our folks in AFMA will be able to tell us more on how this. Uh, uh, behaving in the last few years. So the colleagues next door uh, will probably have more information on how this, uh, uh, what you call a mix, has been behaving. Again, I mentioned the receipt financing and some smart financing programs which we've been participating in, and this has also been a, a huge boost to how we, we uh, uh, build the infrastructure. There has been expectations uh, socially on what we're trying to achieve to make sure that we try and connect and connect it. Now, in, in terms of the internal factors, some of these probably we might debate, but uh, I would want to go in detail. But we needed to be a little bit more innovative and, and be creative in what we're trying to achieve. Um, the management and, and the leadership had to be a bit more agile and, and be able to, 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 to respond. To. We established a very smart collaboration. I'm looking forward to even establish more uh, local colleagues there, local colleagues. A uh, number of people here want to really enhance that so they can build more partnerships so you can see how we can accelerate the growth of internet connectivity on the continent. We're very passionate. That, 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 
that's something which we can't get away. Uh, and working with extremely uh, skilled teams of people. So that's also allowed us to move in this space. And I've also seen the passion uh, in the team here and uh, I'm thinking of, I might have to tell our scout members here of advisory and, and leadership to help me uh, tap into the knowledge we have. We, we have a, an extremely, we are extremely sensitive to our responsibility socially. And that's why we, we, we want to make money, we're in business to make money, but we want to make that money very responsibly. We've also looked at making sure that we don't cherry pick. Existing operators who are in the country are cherry picking. They're choosing where to make money, how much they want to make, and how much they want to charge customers. We decided to, to, to build a platform and services which are very inclusive. And then we're looking at empowering local people by creating what we call security channels. These are the agents uh, we have taken the model of colleagues and we have taken, where they are allowing people in the rural community, those uh, communities who are running on a certain number of the products and services have to be the people who we empower. Now, uh, I will just run through these so that we can actually uh, give you any synopsis. We expect to build the number of hotspots in that, in that experience. Uh, 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 well, customer prices equipment about 3,500. We, we're doing it at a very low cost so that the entry barrier has to be cut off. Um, each of our, our, our CPE, a TV wide space, customer prices equipment, it's a minimum of about one access point. But we can build more around it, depending on our capacity and on how far, uh, of what, what pipe that CP is provided with. We are looking at uh, build, we have a hybrid mix of technologies. Of course, TV wide space is one piece of the puzzle, and I wouldn't want this room to believe that TV wide space is solving the problems. TV wide space is one of these puzzles. We have a different mix of technologies and infrastructure, and I'll be happy to talk to you in detail on what those pieces are. Uh, again, uh, this is also what our colleagues and we will actually be doing. So we, we need to emphasize that it's not just TV wide space which is solving the problem, but it's been tremendous change in the way we access the services. We are the first operator in Malawi to deploy um, um, uh, uh, an infrastructure on a line speed. We, we build the whole infrastructure, the backbone is owned by us, the towers are owned by us, uh, nobody has done this. This is really something which we just decided to do uh, and that we believe we are going to change the way uh, access is provided. Our partnership with the Malawi Postal Corporation which is uh, the, the postal office, is also a tremendous uh, uh, boost to our, to our growth because we believe that postal services has to evolve with the changing uh, uh, technologies and we are empowering the postal offices as a local entry point for our people to be able to access services and products. Um, this is uh, uh, in line with what my government is doing to create the post office one post, one stop shop so all government services are being provided from the post offices, um, be it your road taxes or your uh, uh, passports or whatever, they're being collected or issued from the post office. So we want to leverage and enhance that to make that uh, the facility for people to connect where they have to connect. We are a completely solar face company. So what we mean by that is that we, we have taking solar out of our first uh, supply of energy to all our power systems and in the subsequent discussions which we're going to have I will give you more details on why we need solar first. Uh, we are using far much less energy to uh, power our, our systems and services. The current services that we are, we are doing in four phases, we're building uh, 20 sites per phase, so it's spread across in, uh, in four phases. Um, on a footprint of about 300 square kilometers. We, we, we are, uh, uh, the cost of it is 
probably not 6.25, probably is just 10% of what an infrastructure of this kind will cost uh, if you look at preparative technologies, LT or 4G technologies. And they will want to cover the most literate, literate population in Malawi uh, with our TV white space, both in the rural and the uh, peri-urban and urban areas. And we want to go in the market at least 25% to 45% cheaper than any other on the market. And we actually prove this because we do know how much all the operators are charging. And on subsequent discussion, I can share that with you. We've seen the impact to what we're doing because we just created the network and then all other our providers are coming in to try and offer various services. So we are enabling, our infrastructure is enabling new services uh, which probably were not been offered before and this is exciting to us because now um, we, we are enabling other operators and providers of various services both in, in, in urban and rural. Uh, to be able to deliver what they're looking for. And there are so many stuff which we think uh, are capable, um, but I wouldn't want to exhaust that list here. But just to give you an idea that Malawi and the International Access Index is about, I think, about 145 or 155. And um, the recent discussion I had with the FRIA was that by uh, having this infrastructure problem, I would, would go to about 110. So we'll move about 30 to 35 places um, down by having the infrastructure. Given accessibility network, this is tremendous change. I will touch a bit more on TV white space, but this afternoon I'll give more details on what TV white space is doing. But just to give you an idea that the challenges we're trying to look at is there's, there's a business challenge to this. We are looking at environments where the average revenue per user is very, very low. We look at less than five dollar a month, and um, uh, it's such technology like fiber and, and LTE uh, is not doesn't justify business cases for the larger corporates who wants to build these things. So we these are challenges to provide uh, connectivity. And second thing is the other thing is that you you know these environments we're tackling are extremely hostile, hostile in terms of power requirements, hostility in terms of the terrain arrangement and, and, and you have to make sure that you can service those people with at least reasonable high capacity. So those are the challenges to establish a business in that environment because obviously you can't make money if these things exist. So we see TV white space as an enabler to allow us to communicate. Uh, so what we're doing is we are trying to define our service delivery layer, uh, business delivery platform using the TV white space and then leverage on the extreme uh, uh, better propagation characteristics of a low frequency signal rate of, of um, a penetration tech, tech, uh, of low frequencies on TV white space to reach out to those uh, to reach communities. We've taken a number of tactics and uh, I have to say this has been something we thought of doing. We've been quiet to try and do what we're doing but we've taken a first mover advantage. We uh, want to we want to achieve profitability as quickly as we can, um, but we're also offering higher than standard service level, um, uh, higher than standard SLA, which all operators are necessary to. SLA in, in, in Malawi, I'm not sure where my colleagues are coming from, doesn't seem to exist in, in, in addition. So what we say is, okay, we won't put that as a core, so that people understand that we are very conscious on what they get. The technology trials which we did before, uh, we had to spend about uh, $50,000. Uh, we've done a commercial trial which we are, we are uh, working through with about just over half a million dollars. And um, we have taken advantage of uh, the Wi Fi, the TV wire space, and make sure that we comply very closely to the other two. The, the eight, two, the two, two. Um, uh, uh, standard, which is not all operators are compliant with, but, but the sort of manufacturers, but the company will be working with, uh, uh, they are well on track to make sure they, they achieve compliance to that standard, which is very critical to us. 
as I say, we are off grid company. So solar first, everything comes in. And we know exactly how much power we need to power our systems. Our typical uh, point of presence will consume about 200 watt of power. This is far less than about 15 kilowatt of power, uh, which a normal GSM system would take. Uh, I think our colleague there from Canada will give us more insight on how power consume for the GSM. So I'm very excited to, to tap into this knowledge and be able to get the, uh, the power uh, systems to us. Um, in comparison, if you have to look at coverage from Malawi, you need about 500 base stations. That would take about 400 to 650 million dollars. If we do the same thing as the technology we're doing now, you probably going to need about 50 to 70 million dollars. So we're talking about 80 sites now, so we'll be working far less than that. If you give a comparative view on how much the LTE or 4G or 5G or 6G or whatever G we might call in the future, it's extremely expensive to build. The most important when doing these things, I, I have to say, is public planning. Planning is extremely key. It's important that we plan it right. Um, because it's hard to fix, 10 times more to fix the thing when you haven't planned it right. So we spend a lot of time making sure we plan our, our infrastructure, we design it right. Um, the, we don't have a lot of spectrum, so it turns out new thing. So we have to make sure that we can plan our system for channel reuse. Um, I'll share this information probably in the next and afternoon summit and how we've done this in some aspects. It's very critical that when you're doing these systems, which you're using various channels and frequencies, where you're able to plan. Try and document where we can. Now, we engineers, documentation is something we, we, we find as a problematic. Um, I, I'm really happy to see our colleagues in Nigeria. Uh, knowledge structure is something you've done very well, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited to see that. Uh, it's probably I will invite you tomorrow as my mentor to help me bring on board someone, some of the guys. Equipment, we need to know the locations, the GPS coordinates, um, make sure that you know your. your your addresses and MAC addresses, uh, do the network topology, the design, do it right, understand. Then the rest of the stuff seems to be flowing pretty much clear. So I'm not saying we haven't done it here, but this is something I found over time. It's very useful when you're working on these designs to make sure you plan, document, revisit, update, plan, document, revisit, update, and then eventually this whole thing could work. Power is critical. So we need to understand the power requirements. When we're working on these systems, you need to plan your power needs. And I wouldn't want to belabor the point because I think Carlos uh, uh, mentioned a lot more on this. We've heard a lot more about solar systems and how to provision it. Uh, I'm not going to give a tutorial on what you're supposed to do. There are various formulas to work with to try and make sure that we understand the load or the equipment we put in place the number of batteries required, the panels we need, and the charge controller uh, we have to put in place. And uh, you know, we can have a, you know, a typical scenario I was trying to give up there is that you know, two base station, one says six port Ethernet switch and, and stuff. I think we had test probably if uh, one of us here could work out how much power we need uh, for a, 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 a 10 watt uh, base station and a 5 watt port, uh, a 16 port. I'll probably will be interested to hear how one will tell me what power is required. Carlos should not participate because he's done this over and over, so please, someone should tell me what's the variable consumption will be and the uh, number of rating factors on um, per hour we might need for that, and obviously the number of rating power of the channel, charge controller and the panels. And in essence, as I said, we, we're really looking at this communication, uh, quote and max, that communication is a human survival. These are basic needs. Uh, so we categorize communications in the same category of water, roads, shelter, and to us, connecting the uh, unconnected is, uh, is, is something we feel very passionate about, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, do this to uh, allow our members to participate in the global economy. I have uh, some members of my team. This is not the exhaustive list, but uh, I have a member of my team. Uh, the CEO wasn't able to, to attend. Um, uh, it's, it's Ned Krishaki. 
is not available, uh, uh, it's been um, very, very instrumental to get us going. Um, and obviously, uh, the, uh, our CFO, who I met to be my younger brother, um, is also <laughs> uh, something I'm trying to empower. So in a nutshell, we're trying to build an infrastructure for fast, very reliable, um, affordable connectivity for cloud services. And I, 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 I also would quote a, a quote from Mawingo, we want to leverage what they're doing uh, on how you can provision, manage, and run services of the cloud. Uh, with that, I hope we uh, are in time. Thank you very much for your attention.